Hello and welcome to the Wolverton Workshop. In this video I'll be going through the track plan I've put together for my N-gauge layout, Wolverton North. Please stand back from the platform edge. I've used the software tool AnyRail to allow me to design the layout digitally. It's a really great package and well worth purchasing the complete programme should you be planning a layout yourself. It has allowed me to check what fits inside the space before the space even exists. It also offers the bonus of being able to print the plans out at full scale, which will be very helpful when it comes to laying track. So let's get into it. The room that Wolverton North will fit into is fairly sizeable, and after many iterations I've settled on an L-shaped layout. It runs along the back wall and down one side of the building. The dimensions of this are 6 metres by 4 metres, or 19.5 feet by 13 feet. The layout will then wrap around each end and along the inside walls where the fiddle yards will be. Originally I tried multiple methods to avoid a lift out or duck under section, but the alternative was either large helixes or long ramps with some surprisingly complex track work under the layout. I eventually relented and decided a lift out section was less of a compromise, and by removing inclines I can run scale length trains with confidence. The whole layout will be set on a hillside so that the two lines are separated in height, with the heritage line sitting about 20 centimetres higher than the main line. Taking a look at the heritage railway first and starting at the end of the line at Bridge North. The station platforms will be towards the front of the layout, with the yard and sheds just behind. There are three connected buildings that make up the loco works. The boiler workshop, a machine and paint workshop and a large four lane loco shed. I've taken the liberty of adding a turntable that does not yet exist on the actual railway, but I was able to get the proposed position for this from the submitted planning documents. There are two main platform faces at Bridge North, one of which is rather short, but currently the SVR are completely relaying the yard behind this, which will see a change to the layout and allow an extension to platform 2. As the real work progresses, I will probably modify my design to match the new yard layout and platform extension. The main station building sits on platform 1, alongside a much newer building that houses the cafe. There is a short bay platform at the throat of the station that currently stables several converted carriages. These are used for staff accommodation. On the real railway, the link to the running line has been removed, and I'm not sure yet if I'll include a set of points to be able to access this siding, or model this as per the real thing. Leaving Bridge North, the track passes over a representation of Oldbury Viaduct. If there is room, I also plan to add a replica of Dan's Mill to this area. The line then curves around the corner of the room and heads down the shorter side of the L. The focus of this side of the layout will be the main line station towards the front, so the heritage line will meander through greenery towards the back of the layout. The idea is to create the general feel of the SVR as it winds its way along the valley. Most of the inspiration for this area will be taken from the section of line between Arley and Hiley. It then curves around and over the lift-out section, and into what was going to be a short scenic run and a large ladder-style fiddle yard. As I was designing this though, I looked at the space available and thought, there must be something a little more interesting that would serve both as a fiddle yard, but also be fully scenic. I started to look to see if there might be a suitable terminus station that would also have the capacity to store a number of logos and rolling stock. The obvious candidate was Kidderminster, as in reality it's the other end of the Sem Valley line but the lack of many long sidings doesn't really lend itself to a station come fiddle yard. After a lot of looking around at other heritage lines, I eventually decided to go with Loughborough on the Great Central Railway. I know it's a bit of an odd combination having a line start at Bridge North and end in Loughborough, but it gives me a good excuse to run different stock and the station fits in the long, narrow space available. So as the railway curves around and over the lift-out section, it becomes a twin-track line. It heads around another corner and begins to run along the inside wall of the L. I've designed this area to reflect the real station throat at Loughborough. The aim of this section is to serve two functions. It gives me some double track line to watch trains pass by as they do on the Great Central Railway, but it also gives me a couple of passing loops. The idea is to allow me to hold trains in these loops to simulate a much longer railway between the two main terminus stations. Moving round the inside of the L and under another road bridge, the line enters Loughborough Station. Although the track work is relatively simple, it has nice long platforms and a good amount of siding space. For example, the siding at the rear of the layout is just over 4 metres, so there's plenty of room to stable full rakes of carriages. Beyond the station there are three lines to allow loco run rounds, as well as lots of track to house out-of-service locos. 
I looked at having the line run right up to the loco shed and modelling this as a semi-relief building, but once I laid it out in any rail, it pushed the station too close to the inner corner of the room, so instead I'll be using the Empress Road Bridge as the scenic break. Here is the complete heritage line from end to end. The distance from Bridge North platform to Loughborough platform is a fraction over a scale mile, and at heritage speeds it will take a train just under two and a half minutes to travel the complete line. Now moving on to the main line. When I first started the planning, I was considering having the main line without a station at all because I didn't want to overcrowd the layout. But as time went by, me and my son started spending quite a bit of time on the platforms at Wolverton watching trains go by. It then seemed a shame not to add the station to my layout, plus it will make the operation of the main line that little bit more interesting. Wolverton is a great station for the layout because of its simplicity. The station building is modest and the road bridge will serve as a great scenic break into the fiddle yard. In the other direction, once it leaves the station, the line turns around the corner and passes over a viaduct, just as it does in the real world. It then meanders along the front of Bridger North before heading into a set of tunnels. The area around the tunnel portals is one I have not yet fully designed. Along the inner walls and underneath Loughborough will be the fiddle yard that provides long storage loops for each of the four lines. The aim is for the main line to be able to operate itself using automation, whilst I'm running the heritage line, which should prove to be the more interesting layout to operate. And here is the complete scenic railway. As you can see I have a huge amount of work between now and a finished layout. It's an ambitious plan that I know is going to take a long time to finish, but isn't the planning and building part of what makes model railways enjoyable? And that's it for this video, so until next time, thanks for watching.